Um, hello, my name is Ola Volo, and I'm an illustrator and an artist based in Vancouver, BC. A lot of my work is inspired by folklore, and it tends to be a lot very narrative. And I'll be speaking about work and creativity at Creative Mornings on November 6th. I was born in Kazakhstan, and my family background is very diverse, so a Polish mother, a Russian dad, and raised in a Kazakh cultural setting. Um, it definitely had an influence on me from the very beginning. I was out studying art outside of school and, or as a kid ever since I could remember, probably at four. And so ever since then, I think that trickled in um, into story, storytelling became a very important part of my upbringing. There's definitely a lot of stories that are shared between our families and coming to Canada storytelling became a way to pass on traditions and history and family values and illustrating stories became like this challenge i think it's a skill to be able to narrate stories uh, but also to illustrate them and to beautify them and so i think with time i got better at it better at it and better at my style and better at my my meaning of these stories uh, but the the cultural aspect became sort of uh, trickled into it and it's starting to shape the communication and who I communicate to. And part of it, part of my big desire is also to cut the language barriers between who the story, who understands the story. So there, that's why I kind of, I love that people in Vancouver or in Kazakhstan or in, in Europe are able to understand the story in a fairly similar way. and. I kind of cut those barriers by being maybe distinct, but also very forward with the stories I'm trying to say. Uh, soon after I graduated on my car in 2012, so three years ago now, I had a chance to meet professional illustrators, and I saw the difference between doing illustration, illustration as a passion and doing making as a career. It was definitely a lot of work to go over on the other side of, of that thought process and make it a lifestyle for myself. But the minute I met them and heard about their prolific lifestyles and how much work it needs to be actually put in and saw the other be behind the scenes of being a professional illustrator, something clicked and like that's all I could think about and that's all I wanted to do. And ever since then, I don't think I had a day off <laughs> from illustration. So it's become a completely, a complete world for me that I, I can't get enough of, so. That's, I think, was the biggest transition from just being an illustrator and like living <laughs> as an illustrator. Yeah. When you look at my work, you see so many stories and characters that are overlap each other and maybe even have a couple stories that happen within the same piece. And I often get asked uh, what goes through my mind when I'm working on, this, on these pieces. And definitely, um, finding a sense of humor in every story and no matter how far away the project is like if it's a client's project that is not my own story I tend to put a little twist of my own story into it and that's the only way I kind of I keep I keep that work so personal and passionate that I, I'm passionate to work on it because there's a little bit of part of me and not doesn't matter if it's a commercial work or a personal piece there has to be a bit of me going on so I think what goes in my mind is how can I make it as personal as possible? <laughs> and especially with the characters, I, I think a lot about people's personalities and what kind of animals they represent or how I want, how, what kind of look I want the, the stories to, or like what kind of tension I want the stories to have. And that's, that, go, that goes through a lot of my mind. How can I overlap as many stories into one piece as possible? The main story, my story, a little bit of humor, a little bit of, a little bit of something else. So. I can't wait to see what it's going to be like in 10 years. But yeah, I, I just, I, for me, when I decided to make that switch of, of living and being responsible of where my career will go, I started to feel that I wanted to do it all the time. I wanted to think about it. I wanted to research it. I wanted to talk about it all the time. So it, it consumed me and I think it still consumes me in this beautiful way where I'm like, oh, like that's all I want and I want to, that's all I want to talk about. But in some way, it's getting harder to relate to like 
like to people who have re regular jobs and to like make that lifestyle together like I definitely has affected my personal life but um, I think me got getting deeper into this just makes me find the right the right people that support that sort of work ethic and that passion so it's opened up a, a lot more doors for me to um, to meet the bright people to that excite me about life and make me more passionate about what I'm doing even more so but I don't know what's gonna happen 10 years it's gonna I can't wait like I will like I want to be 36 now <laughs> or like 46 now and see where it is but we'll see <laughs> in 10 years I'll have to find an a way for it to transform that, like that work ethic that I that I love. I feel like that has to be transformed into something new, like teaching or perhaps maybe art directing projects. Or I don't think I can consistently work the way I work now. I think I will. I don't think that's sustainable for 20, 30 years ahead. But I think it has to be changed into a way that is consistently as motivating and as prolific and exciting, but in new ways.